Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chantel, and today is my favorite time of the month. I am going to do my reading journal for the past month. I read a lot of good books this month and some average ones, so I figure I would go through my reading journal. I love doing my reading journal because it helps me remember all of the things that I loved the most about books, and then when the next part of the series comes out, I can look and see what happened in the last book because often there's like so much time between them. Or if I'm reading nonfiction, I can remember remember bits and pieces of the book that I really liked or if I'm just reading a standalone book that I can remember how I felt in the moment that I read it. So that's kind of why I like to do this and I like to look back at my thoughts and the vibes of the books that I read prior because you'll notice I make these like book mood boards and that's one of my favorite parts of book journaling. So if you're interested in seeing my monthly recap we're gonna go ahead and get into that. Okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is slide into my reading journal here and pull out my pen and then I'm going to hop over to my library page. And this is what we have in. This is one book from this month. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this in my landscape mode and I'm gonna open up Safari and go to Goodreads to pull in the rest of the books that I read. Okay, so I like to tap on the book to make it big and then I can grab that and drag and drop it over and resize the cover to fit into my library here. This one you might not be able to see, but it's the Atlas Six, and if I could have given this book six stars, I would have. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just put in the name and what I rated the book out of five. Now that I have all of my covers in, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my lasso tool, grab the first book that I read this month, which was If We Were Villains by ML Rio. Tap off my pen tool, go ahead and tap on that first book. And then I can grab my lasso tool again, hold down and paste in my cover. And now I'm gonna be able to put in all of my book details and then write in my little review. This was a very good book, by the way. So I figured while I show you guys my journaling entries as I make them, I would tell you a little bit about each of these books. So in case any of them tickle your fancy, you can add them to your TBR as well. Or if you've read them, you can kind of gauge if we had the same takes on books. I love to do that with people. So that's why I thought I would add this in as well. The first book I read is called If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This was on Kindle Unlimited and it's been on my TBR forever. So as soon as it became available on Kindle Unlimited, I really, I knew I wanted to read this book as soon as possible. I love things that are dark academia style books. And this I would definitely categorize that way for sure. And I would categorize this as a mystery. I wrote down thriller and mystery, but at reflecting on this book in general, it definitely lays more firmly in the mystery category. It's very much like uncovering a case in retrospect that's already happened. So you're not gonna be stressed out reading these books if you are not a thriller lover. It was very interesting. It's about this set of students that are in their senior year at this very elite art school that specializes specifically in Shakespearean actors. So every year you go forward and half the class is like dropped. At the end of the senior year, there's just like a handful of students left and they've known each other for so long and they're in all of their plays together. So they're very familiar with each other. If you have ever done theater in high school or 
you know, if you do it now, um, you'll know you get really close to the people that you are doing theater with. So think about that kind of dynamic, but then this is like up a notch because these are some serious actors. I don't even think that they leave this school with an actual degree. It's just extremely prestigious. So they will get hunted down for hardcore acting roles after the school. There's a lot on the line and every year, less and less of them move forward. So they are friends, they know each other really well. They lean on each other, they act together, but there's also a sense of rivalry between all of these characters. Our main character in this book is named Oliver Marks. Oliver out of the group of students that we follow throughout this series is probably the most humble. He comes from the most humble background. He ends up having to go on scholarship to finish school for a variety of reasons that you'll see. And he starts the book coming out of prison for a murder that happened on campus. And you follow the entire book is from his point of view, telling the story as it happened. And it is very interesting. I never saw what was gonna happen happen. I've never read a book like this before. It was really unique to me, but I have heard in retrospect after reading this and then reading other reviews on Goodreads and things that it's very similar to The Secret Society, which I have been dying to read by Donna Tartt. So I'm hoping to kind of space them out because that has been on my list forever too. Again, like very dark academia. I would recommend this, especially since it's on Kindle Unlimited. The only thing that I will say is that they talk to each other in this Shakespearean language. If I was a little bit better at understanding that, if I'd paid a little bit more attention in English class when I was younger, maybe I would have more of an appreciation for this. If you have a lot of appreciation for Shakespeare, you're going to love this. It might be your favorite book ever. So I'm definitely going to make a book mood board for it. I am going to go back over here to my index, grab my book mood board here. And then I'm just gonna grab these three dots at the top, copy my page, go back over to my library, and paste my page. And now I'm just gonna open up Safari, go to Pinterest. And now that I'm in Pinterest, I'm just gonna type in if we were villains. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna come up a bunch of photos for this particular aesthetic because it is such an aesthetic book, exactly how, what I thought was gonna come up. Is my first review done. I'm gonna go back over to my library and do the same thing for the next book. The next book that I read, I wasn't sure if I should count. It's The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. And this is a tiny little children's book that I found at Target and I was leafing through it. And as soon as I started leafing through it, I knew that I needed to read this book. I knew that this would always be on my shelves. This is a gorgeously, if you look at it, a gorgeously illustrated and written little children's book that I think would translate to really any age group at all. And it's just a collection of life lessons that everybody should know. I thought this was absolutely beautiful and I would recommend it to anyone. The next book I read is called The Atlas Six. And if I could give a book six out of five stars, this would get it. I was absolutely obsessed with this book. I still think about this book every single day. I probably will think about this book for till the end of time. I was so obsessed when you talk about dark academia, this is exactly the kind of book that I personally want to read. It's been on my list forever. It's why I have the Fairy Loot special edition version of this book. Cause when I saw it, I knew that I wanted to read this book. So I bought the special edition of it. But but this is one of those books that I liked so much that I could not put down that I had a long drive and I bought the audio version of this and I bought it on Kindle. I have this in every possible way that you can have a book because I could not put it down. I could not go a day or a second without finding out what happened next. And it is stunningly written, which I expect nothing less of Olive Blake. I've learned so much about this author since then and every single one of her books 
are on my TBR now. This was so good. The only thing that I will say that I don't love about the Atlas Six is that there is like a big twist that happens at the end and it was like an amazing, incredible moment. No notes, truly, but there are two more books and I'm starting the second book right now and I'm not as interested in it as this first book. And sometimes I find that that's the case with these, I don't know, these series of fantasy books, especially when the first book is so good and I just... I, maybe I think it's the Dark Academia kind of vibe, but I don't know that it works super well for series because you build up the stakes in the first book and now the stakes are kind of outside of that, the academics. Do you know what I'm saying? So you'll only get that if you've read this book, but I could not recommend it more. So good, like truly no notes, chef's kiss. <laughs> After I read The Atlas Six, I was committed to getting back into reading Kindle Unlimited books for the month. I had tried and put down so many Kindle Unlimited picks this particular month, but I knew that I wanted to read What the River Knows. Once this went on Kindle Unlimited, I already have the physical copy of this book. I had heard that this book is very similar to The Unmaking of June Farrow and books like that that I absolutely love. So I was really excited to read this, but I have to tell you that one of the reasons I didn't read a lot of books this month was because this book read so incredibly slow for me. This has 416 pages, but that's kind of on the shorter end of a lot of books that I have read, especially in this like fantasy style genre. And I don't know, it was extremely slow. It kind of read a little bit like Bridgerton. I'm pretty sure it is in that same kind of vein. And another thing is that it's young adult and it definitely read young adult to me. Not that I don't think that this was extremely well written. I thought this was extremely well written. So that definitely didn't disappoint, but when it when it felt young, it, the main character felt really young and all of the issues that she was experiencing felt really young as well. But even though the character herself felt really immature, the content of the story felt really dark and deep and serious. And for some reason, those two together wasn't really, I mean, it wasn't really working for me. It follows the story of this girl named Inez and she lives in Argentina with her aunt and her parents are obsessed with ancient Egypt and they spend half of the year in Egypt every year and they don't take Inez with her. They say that it's dangerous. So she waits with bated breath for her parents to come home. Sometimes her dad will bring her home gifts, magical gifts, things that have old magic connected to them and she can feel old magic because of this. So this book takes a deadly turn at the beginning because her parents pass away and Inez runs away from her aunt and her cousins and she runs away from them. And at this time it is, especially at her age, it's hard to travel without supervision. So she pretends that she is a widow and in a very impressive feat, she gets to Egypt to see her uncle who her parents spent half of the year with every year. And she is trying to investigate their life and investigate their death. And while she is there, she also meets someone who works for her uncle who happens to be this handsome Englishman named Wit. And they have like a little bit of a slow burn, will they, won't they, sort of situation that I'm not giving anything away by saying because you're gonna pick up on it very quickly. But this takes a lot of dark turns. There's a lot of loss in this book, but at the same time, our main character is so young and so immature and she handles things in a very immature way and you see her making the same mistakes over and over and over again and it just read a little slow to me. I think that a lot of people would like this book. It just wasn't my particular cup of tea. It got really good by the end, so maybe I'll pick up the next book, but we'll see. I'm on the fence about it. <laughs> The next book I read was Magnolia Parks, The Long Way Home. I needed something that I knew for sure that I was going to eat up quickly to get out of the reading slump that I was definitely feeling. After reading What the River Knows, I was not super motivated to read another book. So I knew that this was a good time to pick up Magnolia Parks. I have never read Magnolia Parks and read it in less than a couple of days because even though these books are so long, you were just in it. You like are addicted. You have to know what happens next. I would put this book in a category of like, if you were to think about books like nutrition, I would put this in the category of candy, but very specifically sour candy because 
If you read these all at once, I don't know what's going on with your heart because they will wreck you by the end, just like sour candy will like wreck your mouth <laughs> if you eat too many of them. So I space all my Magnolia Parks books out, even though I'm like hardcore addicted to them because they are, cover some very deep stuff. And this one has the deepest content yet. We have Magnolia and BJ being followed in this book. This is a romance. If you're not familiar with the Magnolia Park series in general, this follows a couple of couples because there's Magnolia and there's Daisy. And there are two books for each of them. I think a third for Magnolia at this point. But it started out with this set of four books two Magnolia books, two Daisy books. I'm on the third one. So the second Magnolia book that I've read so far, and they are these wealthy English kids in their early twenties. And they have tons of rich people problems, but also these hardcore kind of tragic love stories. Will they, won't they? Magnolia has known BJ since she was like a little kid. They went to boarding school together, but they've had like this will they, won't they sort of thing for basically their whole lives. And Magnolia at the end of the last book leaves the country and in this book she is back. I don't want to leave any spoilers out there for you and since this is a romance there's only so many things that could happen you would think but even more than you could possibly imagine happens in this particular book and it is so good but also extremely sad so be warned if you're going to read this one but they do kind of read a little bit like Gossip Girl, except with some deeper, I don't know, more serious content. So just be aware if you're not trying to be sad, I wouldn't pick up a Magnolia Parks book. It isn't like a light romance like you might expect it to be. And finally, I read My Husband by Maud Ventura. This has been on my list for a really long time and I was at a little bookshop over the weekend and picked it up and I read this in one day. It's a very short book, totally doable to read this in a day if you wanted to. And this was one of those unhinged books. It reads like a thriller, although nothing scary happens. So if you're not into thrillers, but you're into thrillers, you might like this. It's also just an interesting story about maybe mental health. A lot of other things, this this woman on the cover here is obsessed with her husband and that's not giving anything away. That's the plot of the whole book. This woman is obsessed with her husband and you're watching her go through her day to day. You're watching a week in her life and how obsessed she is with her husband. And when I say obsessed, it, this is not a healthy obsessed. Like this is a crazy obsessed. This feels like watching a Lifetime movie. In fact, if you like those unhinged movies on Lifetime, you will love my husband. I know I did. This was a pretty good book, I'm not gonna lie. It got a three and a half star for me. And that's mostly because nothing really happens in this book, but it feels kind of like one of those books that are character driven. The book is, the wife in this book and she keeps you on your toes till the very end. And I am again so excited about all of these being written down. I'm so excited to read them in the future. Let me show you how satisfying this is. I'm going to open up my library, start at the first book of this month and then just flip through so you can see how fun it is. I am increasingly obsessed with these book mood boards. I cannot help it, it's so much fun. And as you can see, I'm currently addicted to these dark academia style books. So if you have any of those, let me know down below, even though kind of after all of the books that I've read, there's been so much tragedy. I almost wanna read something light and fun. Oof, and Magnolia Park. I go into them thinking it's going to be like a fun hee hee ha ha time. And it's never a fun hee hee ha ha time. It's always a will they, won't they torturous time that I deeply enjoy and I'm obsessed and I have to keep reading them, but I can't read them all at once because if I do, I probably will be miserable. One of those kinds of books, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I feel like that's oddly specific. And finally, my husband, which I read in one sitting and is truly obscure. So that is all of my books for the month. I would love to know what your book recommendations are for the coming month and I'll catch you next time. Bye.